started in Denver, Colorado. The first two days are all about trail logistics and making resupply boxes. To bring down the weight of the backpack they only carry the items they actually need for that specific section. So they make several packages with dried food, maps and other items and ship them from the post office to specific depots along the trail. They split up the 32 days of hiking in 7 segments, so they don't have to carry more than 3 to 5 days of food at a time, which makes the climbing easier. This is a high elevation trail, and they will spend most of their time between 10 and 13,000 feet. That's 3 to 4,000 meters. They will start at Waterton Canyon, south of Denver pass through the ski areas between Copper Mountain and Aspen. Then they go even higher, straight into the West Collegiate Mountains which are rough and very remote. After the Collegiates, the mountains become more friendly, but not for long. Before they know it, they head straight into the spectacular San Juan mountain range. And by the time they reach Durango, they have climbed a total of 27 kilometers. That's 90,000 feet. Here we go, the beginning of the Colorado Trail, the 1st of August. And this is the beginning. You are in Denver, Colorado. Came a long way. You are, well, I wish you luck. Pace yourself, it's uh, how many miles? 500 miles. Waterton Canyon can be really hot, so they decide to hike early in the morning, when it is still cool.
the old west is still here. Very often they encounter old mines. From the 1850s, thousands of men tried their luck in finding gold, silver and crystals. And this part of the Rocky Mountains is littered with old mines. The forest is changing and they're now walking among some of the oldest living things on the planet, the bristlecone pines. They're easy to distinguish from the other pines. Just look at the needles. If there are five needles that originate from the same spot, then you have found one. The oldest of them live in the Sierra Nevada mountain range in California and can be more than 5000 years old. Jefferson. We're here at the Jefferson Market to get our food package in South Park. They couldn't get a shower at Jefferson, so they look for a good stream to wash themselves do some laundry and have a shave. There is a big storm coming, so they head out to the small village of Breckenridge to wait out the rain and head out early in the morning to climb Copper Mountain.
walking with Cookie Monster. Hey. Hey. So with the ramen, you crunch it like this. <laughs> okay. Like this. <laughs> yes. And then you put it in. There you go. It goes in. Okay. So in the meantime, you take your apples and you put it in the boiling water. Put the apples in the boiling water. So, now let us look at the apples. Oh. Okay, let's see. They are good. No, yeah. they're soft. Is it supposed to look like that? Well, if you have enough water, then it's more soft. Uh, if you have too little water, it becomes a bit more sticky. It becomes really sticky, I think. <laughs> Looks like something I normally wouldn't eat. <laughs> <laughs> Any good? Hmm, really good. Yep. They are now heading for the old wild west town of Leadville, which is well known for the many outlaws that stayed in this town. Although the town is a bit more modern these days, it still feels like the old times. They go to the famous Delaware Hotel, pick up their resupply package and take a room in which many outlaws stayed. It is now day 9 and they walked all the way from Denver to Leadville through beautiful forests and over high passes. But the mountains are getting higher and more rugged. From Leadville they hitch a ride back to Tennessee Pass and then walk to Twin Lakes. There, they have a steep climb to the rugged and spectacular West Collegiate mountain range. Monsoon season is starting and they get their first hail, but it is nothing compared to what they will endure later on the trail. Not only the weather is changing, the scenery as well. They now walk through lush vegetation of aspen trees and along beaver ponds.
The mines are not the only things that remind them of the old Wild West. Sometimes they walk on old railroads from companies that were competing of being the first to get from Denver to the Pacific Ocean. Look what we found, some old mine camp. The only thing that's still visible is these old remnants of this, this house and uh, the outhouse in the back where they probably pooped all the time and, and here's some old, I don't know, some old car, I guess. Sleeping Beauty, what about lunch? Oh, yeah, lunch, yeah, I, I just sat down on a relaxing spot to give myself time for lunch. But first we need to eat and then we need to sleep. So. Nice. Cookies. <laughs> Orea cookies. Cookie monster. So the cookie monster like cookies. So uh, usually at the end of a stretch, when we're all almost going into town, I eat cookies as lunch. So that's your whole lunch? No, we split it with two. I can share it with, with somebody else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but not always. If he doesn't have only, I eat them all. Yeah. <laughs> it is now about four something in the afternoon and, and it's monsoon season at the moment in Colorado. And what you see behind me there is this big cloud with a lot of rain underneath. And we're still lucky because we're still dry. So what's cooking today? Ah, cooking. Cookie monster. Okay, let's see. We're going to eat something which is very popular in Holland. In Holland? Yeah. Noodles? No. <laughs> that's, that's just a soup, just in, to start with. Okay. In Holland, it's really a potato country, and in winter time, when there's a lot of potatoes and a lot of vegetables. They like to mix that together. So what do they do? They take the potatoes and they add vegetables. Spinach. In this case it's spinach, but it can also be cabbage or it can be carrots uh, with onion or it can be, I don't know. But they call it in Dutch, they call it stamppot. 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 And officially, besides this, we also need to have um, like so small bacon, I don't know in English. Yeah, bacon. Yeah. Bacon, piece like pieces of bacon added to it, but I forgot them in the shop. Monarch Pass. Monarch Pass marks the end of the Collegiate Mountain section. Here, they pick up their resupply package with food and maps that will bring them all the way to their next stop, Lake City. They are not the only ones in the wilderness. 
Parts of the trail are regarded as some of the best mountain bike trails in the United States. In this section, outside the wilderness, they also encounter four-wheel drives and dirt bikes on the trail. But luckily for them, not often. It's the middle of summer, and insects are everywhere. Especially crickets and grasshoppers, and they are mating like crazy. They are everywhere. And as soon as you start walking, they jump all over the place. Tiny snakes eat insects. Tiny insects eat snakes. Strawberries! They are not the only ones that like berries. There are plenty of bears around them. So every day they have to hang up their food in a tree to make sure it won't be stolen and they won't get hungry in the wilderness. It is normal to have dead trees in a forest. But the forest is actually dying. Pine beetles are digging holes in the trees and they're spreading like wildfire. And every year, more and more Colorado mountain forest is eaten alive. Trail magic. Trail magic! I don't know who you are, but thank you. A coke. <laughs> ah, yes. Up to the trail, Angel! Thank you! Thank you!
Thank you guys. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Appreciate it. <laughs> Is this little gate down here? Little wire gate? Well, yeah, there's a yeah. gate down there, yeah. Yeah. I'll have to feed them down there and open it then. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for waiting. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. Deep thunder is rolling over the plains, and the afternoon clouds of the monsoon give them spectacular sceneries. After a day and night in Lake City, picking up their resupply package and do their laundry, they head back to the trail. This is the last stretch all the way to the Rango, and they go further into the spectacular San Juan mountain range. The rain is coming down hard, and almost everyone stayed in Lake City, but they decided to go anyway. Tomorrow morning there will be a clearing and they want to use that moment to see the spectacular high mountain peaks. Luckily for them, they could warm up with some friends.
Ну и ре. There is an old railroad and it is still intact. It crosses the trail. They decide to take the train and go to Silverton to have some lunch. Autumn is near. The colors of the leaves are changing. And fungi are everywhere.
Moesjeur. Hé, hey, Moes. Je staat wel erg dicht bij het pad. <laughs> Wat praat hem weg? André. Praat hem weg. Wat moet ik doen? Weg praten. Ja, dat weet ik. We moeten er gewoon omheen lopen. Ja. Ik zit ook steeds de hele tijd naar achteren te kijken. Het zijn kleine kinderen zijn er zo. Dus we moeten er echt omheen denk ik hoor. Go away Moes! Pas op hoor, ik kan aanvallen. Ja, weet ik. Tja, en nu? Wat gaan we doen? Hey. Nee. Nee, zo te zien ben jij eigenwijs. Oké, okay, dan lopen we om je heen. Ga mee? Let me take a look at your umbrella. <laughs> this is just perfect. Yep. White Christmas. Oh, yeah. It's already 12 o'clock. Not even 12. Uh, look how pretty it is. It is pretty, it's freezing cold. Yeah. So it's a bit too early for Christmas, I think. <laughs> yep, well, that's mountains for you. Hey, let me show you what happens to my cup. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I have to do that every time because every time it gets so heavy. At least two kilos are on this. Two, on two this kilos? <laughs> okay. Like a, a, a ten, 10 centimeter piece of <laughs> snow on It is now day 32, the last day of their big adventure. They say goodbye to the Rocky Mountains from Goody's Rest and walk down the valley into Durango.